Thanks to a grant from the Heritage Lottery Fund, students from the school have been able to participate in a unique project that explores the Roman heritage of Hinckley and the surrounding area. The whole project got off to an exciting start when a group of actors surprised us during a normal school assembly. They introduced us to the areas of work that would be covered by the project and inspired students to take part. Following the assembly, a core team of students was assembled who had worked on the project after school and during holiday times. Along with many other students, they would work on the project and take part in a variety of activities that would increase their understanding of the Romans. This documentary is a flavour of all that has been achieved. Our first introduction to the Romans was through the local Hinckley Museum. The museum hosted a Roman day at which we could learn about Roman life in Hinckley, Roman pastimes, costume, writing and art. The day was fun and informative and gave the team useful knowledge that would serve them well in undertaking other parts of the project. I did the project because I just thought it'd be quite an interesting thing to do and you just kind of get to learn more about how the world came to be how it is. Um, probably because I like history and I don't know much about the Romans so I'd like to learn more. One of the most challenging and inspiring aspects of the project was to build a replica Roman chariot. Working with members of the school design team, a group of boys have spent many hours after school and during holidays building the chariot from scratch. It has taken a long time, but the end result is worthwhile. We even made our own small contribution by completing the stencil work. This is a uh, Roman chariot, quite accurately sized, if I believe. We built the base uh, as one of the first things we did on the, it was one of the days of the holidays. And then we built the wheels, which was, you know, that, it, you'd think, oh, they just build the wheels, but that was a long process of, you know, putting everything together, sanding everything, making sure it would fit. I was kind of nervous when I went into this about, uh, you know, practical activities, you know, cutting up wood, especially some of like the big saws in there, you know, it's, it can be a bit daunting, but it has definitely developed a sense of confidence in practical activities, I think. You know, we did that, that sense of achievement. Uh, actually, I built that, and that's pretty cool. Looking at the, the process they had to go through and how many chariots they made, you know, they made armies, you know, a, a multitude of chariots like this in the time it took us to make one. I think it really shows the ingenuity of the Romans. It's more of a practical, thematic way of learning history than just reading from a textbook. It's actually putting you through the experience which they had. Alongside the chariot project, another group of students were working on making costumes and jewellery that would be worn by actors in a Roman play. A total of 12 costumes were made, taking a week of the holidays, but the end results were very impressive.
Human Heritage Project, however, relates to the archaeology of the Foss Way. Working with Hinkley Archaeological Society, a group of students took part in a dig at the nearby Foss Meadows. A new section of the famous Roman road had been discovered here previously, and we worked to extend the road. It was a time with inspiring period of time, and whilst we did not find many artefacts, we did manage to help uncover a really important part of the road. There are plans for this road to be made open and accessible to the public, and we are very proud to have been a part of this. Uh, I'm Richard Moore, I work as uh, the Head of Computing and ICT at Redmore Academy because I have a, a keen interest in history and archaeology um, and we're uncovering Roman Road here. It's Foss Way, so it came right up from the south of England right up to York so we know it, it, was, a, a, it was one of the frontier roads that they put in. And, it, and as you go further on down that way, it crosses with the Watling Street, which was the other main Roman road. It's lots of digging around the stones and tidying things up. The people who run this say it's like when the dentist cleans your teeth. You want to make it so none of it is dirty. Well, we've got some pottery. Um, from lots of different areas in time. Yeah. We've got lots of flint, which they used to use lots to with swords. As part of the project, we wanted to put on a genuine Roman play. Research into very writers was done, and it was decided that we would work on a play by Terence called The Girl from Andros. This was a play that was over 2,000 years old, and in the translation that we used, had never been performed anywhere in the world before. An older translation of the play had last been performed in England in the 16th century. Members of the school's youth theatre worked alongside professional actors over a three-day period to rehearse and prepare the play. It was performed on one evening to an audience of historians and archaeologists from the local community and as part of the Snapdragon Festival in the open air to around 800 people one afternoon in the summer. The play was really well received and a lot of fun for the actors. Ooh, what do you think, Beria? Shall I go up to you? Oh, you might as well. At least that way you'll succeed in giving the idea that you're all set to be his wife's lover if he marries her. Oh, go to hell, you and your insinuations, you rascal! Oh, why? There's Janus! Hello! Hello, Panthalus! Uh, I come to you in search of hope, salvation, help, and counsel. I'm in no position to give you counsel, and I've, I've no means of helping you, but uh, what's the matter? Are you getting married today? So they say... Oh! If you do so, this is the last time you will set eyes on me. Why on earth? Alas, <laughs> I dare not say. Beria, you tell them. All right. Oh, what's the matter? He's in love with a girl you ought to marry. <laughs> well, then our tastes differ. Ah, now tell me, Charinus, has there been anything more between you two? <laughs> No, Panthalus, nothing at all. Ah, oh, if only there had been. Go oh, in the name of our friendship and my love for Philomena, please do not marry her. That would be best. Well, I'll certainly try not to. But if that proves impossible, or your heart is set on the madness... Set on it? Do at least postpone it for a few days, so that I may go away somewhere and not see it. Listen, Charinus, 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 listen to me. I don't want credit where none is deserved. In fact, I think it improper for any gentleman to think that. And in the case of this marriage, I am far more anxious to get out of it than you are to take it on. Oh, I can breathe again! In order to increase the knowledge of the core team, a number of trips to key Roman sites in the area were organised during school holidays. These were really helpful and really exciting.
time we got to February, nearly all of the elements of the project were nearing completion, but there was still work to do. We had to learn how to make Roman tiles and Roman wall pictures. In the holidays and after school, we had opportunities to make our own floor mosaics and wall pictures. Once we had completed all the aspects of the project, we had to begin to think about showcasing everything we had done. Work began on a book and on preparing an exhibition. The core team worked very hard on pulling together all the experiences of the many students who had taken part. An exhibition with the book was launched in May. It has been an exciting and unforgettable year. I feel as a member of the core team that I've taken part in something really important. As a school, we have made our own contribution to deepening the understanding of the impact of the Romans on Hinckley. As we look back at the Romans' footprints on the Foss Way, we can be grateful for the foundations they laid for the life we are privileged to lead today.